Welcome to the rooftop of my apartment in Korea. Thought I would film my next video up here just because, you know what, it's, uh, it was raining early today and it's sunny now, so time to be outside when making a YouTube video. But today I wanna to talk about what is the dynamic range of the Canon EOS M. A lot of my followers and a lot of you guys who are watching these videos have the Canon EOS M or you're interested in the Canon EOS M and you know that because you can shoot raw video on this, you can actually get a much, a much higher quality video uh, than you know, it should be outputting out of this old camera. And so part of understanding the image that what comes out of this camera and using this new technique uh, of Magic Lantern and shooting raw video is how much dynamic range are we getting out of this camera? So that's what I wanted to set out to try and understand. So what I essentially did, actually before we get to that, I did some research and uh, DxO Mark says that the Canon EOS M in photo mode has 11.3 stops of dynamic range, which is just mind blowing, I know. Uh, in the age of 2023, um, where cameras have got 14 or 15 plus stops of dynamic range, uh, that doesn't seem to be too impressive. And it's suggesting uh, the Canon EOS M's age of 10 or I think it's 12 years ago now. Um, yeah, is, is <laughs> it makes sense. So um, I wanted to essentially see are we getting those full like 11 and a half stops of dynamic range when we're shooting raw video in um, in Magic Lantern? So what I did is I took the uh, the XT4 uh, the XT4 that I'm shooting on right now, and uh, and I, I shot a bunch of scenes and I compared it. And what I found out is that essentially, actually wait, I'll show you guys the clips and then we'll talk about the uh, findings at the end. Essentially, I shot the same scenes with both the X-T4 in all those different modes and then the Canon EOS M and I kind of adjusted to see uh, what was the closest because I don't have a fancy uh, dynamic range scale uh, to shoot. So what I came to the conclusion of is that the uh, Canon EOS M is actually getting the full 11 and a half stops of dynamic range um, that the DxO Mark talks about in photo mode. And so uh, that's a really good finding. I found that um, there is a lot more room in the shadows to, uh, to play with if you are trying to shoot uh, high dynamic scenes on the Canon EOS M. So essentially what you should be doing is uh, like most cameras is uh, exposing to not clip your highlights and then you can pull up those shadows in post. Now I found that uh, what you export out of MLV does have some sort of bearing on your ability to recover shadows. Um, when using MLV app. So uh, obviously sh uh, exporting in ProRes, uh, I think is gonna give you a little bit more room in those shadows to play with uh, than, shoot, than exporting in, in H.265. Uh, so um, getting the full 11 and a half stops of dynamic range when shooting in video mode on the Canon EOS M, which is a pretty great finding really. Um, the X-T3 has about 12 stops and that's a pretty great camera. Um, so yeah, just a little, uh, curiosity test of mine and I thought you guys might want to know just exactly what's going on uh, with the Canon EOS M in terms of dynamic range when shooting raw. So hopefully you found this video insightful. If you didn't, uh, sorry about that. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'd uh, love for you to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. It's essentially all about how to get the most out of the camera that you already have. Uh, and for me, that's the Canon EOS M and some Fujifilm cameras. So thanks for dropping in today. Um, have a great day and I'll catch you in the next video.